Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. Once again, we have the great privilege of being joined by Mr. John Ward. Yeah, thanks very much. Nice to see you here with us, John. So uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be exploring one of the three effects of electricity. So what are the three effects of electricity, John? Just reminds us of those. Yeah, we've got chemical, yep. magnetic, yep. and thermal. Fantastic. And actually, the thermal one is the one that we're going to explore in this video. Now, you may not be aware, but the bulk of the regulations, John, is concerned with what particularly? Yeah, it's the thermal. Yeah, the thermal side, isn't it? Yeah, making sure that the thermal side of electricity doesn't cause damage to installations, property, or people. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. So that's the bulk of the regs. So we're going to explore the detrimental effects of uh, electricity in terms of the thermal effect, but we're also going to look at what, John, as well as the detrimental effects. Yeah, we're going to look at the beneficial ones as well. Absolutely. Yeah. There are applications for that. So. Absolutely. In fact, we use the bulk of our electricity, don't we? Uh, as a beneficial effect yeah, that's right. in terms of uh, heating. Yeah? So we'll, uh, we'll explore just how that works uh, throughout the video. Uh, and once again, thank you very much for joining us, John. Thank you. So just to reiterate, John, we've obviously mentioned this already. Uh, what are those three effects of electricity? Yeah, the three effects. You've got your chemical, yep. thermal, and magnetic. Fantastic. And in this video, uh, we're going to consider how we can uh, see the thermal effect of electricity going on, what it's going to do. To achieve that, we've got a resistor here. So this is going to represent a load. And on this uh, load, we're going to hook up uh, a power supply to it. And that power supply uh, is sitting over here. So, uh, John, I'm going to give you the safe job, please. Could you connect up our resistor onto uh, that load there? Expertly done, John. Thank you very much indeed. And what I'll do, I'll do the slightly more dangerous job. I'll hook this into our power supply. So I'm going to make sure this is turned off in the first place. We're dealing with extra low voltage here, so there should be very, very minimal risk of us getting injured from this. We've got the voltage turned right down. So we've got the meter here measuring voltage uh, and the voltage meter is turned right down. So there shouldn't be any voltage across here at the moment. Now, as we start to pass current through this load, what's going to start happening to our resistor there, John? Yeah, it's going to start heating up. Absolutely, due to the thermal effect of electricity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we should see a reaction, hopefully. We should. <laughs> and as we turn it up, it's going to get hotter and hotter and until something actually breaks. Absolutely. Didn't want to invite John to Tresham College without setting fire to something. Yeah, so no, be rude not to. <laughs> be rude not to. So we'll see how we get on with this. So let's start cranking the voltage up. So I'm going to turn this up, uh, first of all, to... Uh, this is somewhere around uh, 5 volts we'll start this off with. Yeah. Okay. Now my learners who are gathered in the room should be able to use Ohm's law. We've got an 18 ohm resistor here with 5 volts connected across it. I'm not going to put them on the spot but their minds should be immediately leaping to Ohm's law. See one or two of them smiling, see one or two of them frowning. Okay, we'll see what happens. So what we want to do now is, uh, I can't feel any heat coming off that yet, John. Can you feel any heat coming off that? No. I think we need nothing. to crank this up a little bit more, don't we? Yeah, okay. So uh, let's crank this up. Okay. Oh, we've actually got a lot more voltage on there than I realized. That's good. Had it on the wrong setting. So that's now on 15 volts. And we are now passing uh, something like 0.75 of an amp through there. Okay, now have a little little whiff of that. Yeah, there's a certain uh, bouquet coming yep. off the resistor. <laughs> it's very there? distinctive, isn't it? Yep, that's definitely starting to get warm now. Uh, now let me just see if I can crank this up any further. Okay, so we've got that up to 30 volts now, and we've got about one and a half amps. Okay, now if you look very closely there, we can see that that is definitely, I don't know if you can see that in a picture, but we're definitely getting a little bit of smoke here. And we should be able to see there on the, on the resistor there, it's getting quite, uh, quite blackened now. And that smell is really quite pungent now, yeah? Can you boys smell that over there? It's very distinctive, very, very distinctive, isn't yep. it? Burning yep, burning hot electrical components. Yep. This is actually one of those smells, lads, yeah, that when you're walking around uh, a working environment, fault finding, if you can smell something like this, it can actually help you track down the fault because it really does smell quite badly. Okay, you can see the ends of that resistor are starting to get quite blackened and unpleasant now. Oh, and in fact, actually, oh, brilliant. We've melted it clean off the holder. Yep. That's fantastic. So that's got so hot, it was just starting to glow, actually. It was just starting to give off a little red glow uh, and it's got so hot that it's completely fried. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Yep. 
we're going to make this quite interesting. Yeah, Ooh, hang on, having said that, let's try and do this without shorting it out on the bench. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can actually get that to glow now. Okay, so uh, could one of you boys go and turn the lights off by the door, please? Because I've got a feeling that we might actually start to see this going quite red. There we go. Oh, there it is. Yep. So if you look in the camera, you can see there that we've got a nice red glow going on. That's getting very, very hot indeed. Okay. So what we're seeing here, lads, we're seeing the thermal effect of electricity in action. Okay. And that really is getting... Oh, look at that now. So again, what application could we put this to, John? Let's not think about destructive, because we're currently in the process of destroying this resistor, but what, what beneficial applications could we yep. put this to? Well, the obvious one is actual heating, yep. because of course, electric heaters, it's just a glowing piece of filament wire in there. Yep. So uh, that's a fairly straightforward one. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And your other applications, things like circuit breakers, where you're using the heat inside the circuit breaker to trip if there's too much current going through. And that heats up a bimetallic strip inside which gets to a certain temperature will trip the circuit breaker and avoid the cables heating up orange hot. Cuts it off long before that happens. Fantastic. So we can see here clearly the destructive property of it. But again, you know, this is partly why we use electricity, because it heats things up for us, which we love. But again, the whole kind of thrust of the regulations, a huge majority of the regulations is all about how do we deal with this situation safely? How do we make sure that some the cable that we might be running current through will get hot uh, without causing any damage to itself or to the uh, fabric of the building. Yep, that's right. And the same thing applies to fuses, of course, because a fuse is just a very thin bit of wire. Too much current goes through, it gets hot, and then it melts through, disconnects the circuit. Fantastic. So maybe now would be a good time for us to try and demonstrate what that would look like with a little fuse wire yep. and see if we can get that to pop as Excellent well. Excellent idea. Let's do it. So John, uh, earlier today when you came in to visit our learners, you brought in a load of uh, fuse wire carriers uh, and older uh, uh, consumer units uh, using yeah, fuses right. rather than circuit breakers. Uh, so what are we sort of simulating here? What yep. have we got going on What we've got here basically is a fuse. So we've got a fuse wire there, or the fuse element. Yep. And uh, we're going to put some current through that. Yep. And we're going to overload it there. And we should see that it heats up and melts through. And if that was a real fuse, that would have disconnected the circuit. Fantastic. And the idea of that being that it dis does that before you've actually melted your cables and yep. your wiring. Excellent, so we've seen uh, previously the destructive nature of the heating effect of electricity, and now we're gonna see how we can harness that and turn it into something a little bit more positive. So we've got here the thermal effect of electricity, and we're simulating a fuse wire. Now, if you're wondering why this fuse wire looks like the thickest fuse wire you've ever seen, that's not because we're about to run hundreds and hundreds of amps through here, it's just because uh, it's made out of steel wool that we haven't quite bound tightly together. So hopefully we'll see this working as a fuse wire now. So let's watch very closely. We've got the lights off, so it's reasonably dark. So we should be able to see this happening quite well. We'll start increasing the voltage. No. Oh, there it goes. Okay then, John, so that fuse wire has actually burnt out. Now, it's a little bit tricky to see, uh, but that has actually split just at this end. See that? So you see that the fuse wire did actually break. It wasn't very clear that it had broken, but we could clearly see there that the fuse wire got very hot, and that as it got to a certain point, uh, it simply broke down and the fuse wire did its job. Yeah, and that would have disconnected the circuit and prevented your wiring from uh, overheating and causing damage to the building. Absolutely. So again, we've seen the beneficial side of the thermal effect of electricity as well as the destructive side. So we need to make sure that we're applying the regulations properly to make sure that both sides of those are going to work in our installation work. Yep, absolutely right. Lovely. So John, just to summarise, to help you with your exams, let's remember those three effects of electricity, chemical, magnetic and thermal. So how have we explored the thermal effect of electricity today, John? Well, we've looked at a uh, simulation of a fuse wire. Yep. And as we saw there in the demonstration, too much current through will heat it up and that will break. And that's what disconnects the circuit. Absolutely. And that happens before the wiring in the installation gets overheated, causes yep. a fire and other damage. Fantastic. And we also saw very clearly when we heated the resistor up, 
we saw that passing too much current through an electrical device can cause it not just to get hot, but actually to get too hot. In this case, we saw the resistor broke itself free of its electrical moorings due to that excessive heat. And also it started to glow so hot that if that was a cable in an installation, what could very likely happen? Yeah, you'd be looking at a fire, yeah. destruction of your property. Absolutely, yeah. So we love the thermal effect of electricity, it's very beneficial, but we want to make sure that we keep it in its place by not allowing it yep. to cause damage to anything. Absolutely. Excellent. So once again, John, what a privilege to have you with us. Yep. Thank you very much for joining us here today. And thank you very much for watching.